Let's cross now to Washington, D.C. and speak to Daniel Serwer. He is a senior fellow at the Middle East Institute. Daniel, a lot of diplomatic activity taking place. Do you think the sides are getting any closer to a de-escalation? I don't think there's any clear sign that they're getting closer, but things haven't gotten worse either, and that has to be regarded as modest progress. We have, uh, as you said, we have been expecting an imminent invasion from Russia for several weeks now, and as you said, it hasn't gotten any worse. What does it tell you that we that it hasn't happened yet? I mean, what is Putin waiting for? Well, Putin has several objectives, one of which was to command the attention of the United States and the American president, and he's clearly achieved that objective. But another objective was to split and weaken NATO. And he hasn't achieved that. He, in fact, has, if anything, strengthened NATO and strengthened Ukrainians' desire to join NATO. Uh, it seems to me that the, the odds are that he can only weaken NATO by actually conducting an incursion into Ukraine. And so I still expect this to happen. What options are left for avoiding that? The West is not likely to give in to Putin's demands. What, what do you think we could possibly see uh, in the next step efforts? I think the main thing now is deterrence. The main thing is to uh, make it as clear as possible that Ukraine will defend itself and will defend itself effectively and that the uh, NATO alliance will respond with very vigorous sanctions. And the problem with that, of course, is that there are different views on sanctions within the NATO alliance, especially if the incursion into Ukraine is uh, relatively minor or only along the Black Sea and uh, intended to create a land bridge to Crimea. Uh, it's going to be very hard to convince the Germans to end uh, reliance on Nord Stream 2 for natural gas if uh, the incursion is a small one. Yeah, and I know it's not possible to get inside uh, Putin's head, but what might we likely see from him as far as uh, that kind of incursion if he doesn't get what he wants from the West? Well, I think, uh, you know, he, he won't hesitate to sacrifice Russian soldiers in the cause of splitting NATO. Uh, he's made it very clear that he regards NATO as an enemy, even if NATO uh, wants to regard Russia as not an enemy. Uh, it, he's been very clear about this. And, and uh, my guess is that he uh, can't retreat from this deployment uh, without more than he's gotten so far and more than the arms control type of agreements that have been offered. Uh, he needs something on preventing Ukraine from joining NATO, and that's exactly what Washington and the rest of the alliance cannot give him. Mm, a very sticky situation for sure. Daniel Serwer in Washington, thank you.